DreamWorks. A name that, if you are old enough, probably produces fond memories of fantastic movies, like The Prince of Egypt, Shrek, and How to Train Your Dragon, just to name a few. However, in recent years, like many studios, DreamWorks has become, well... Dog shit. Long gone are the days when you could count on DreamWorks to produce original, compelling stories. Now we get whatever this is. I'm just Ruby Gilman, normal teenager. I know your secret. You're a kraken hiding as a human. And uh, where do you folks come from? France. <laughs> we come from France. Oh, okay. And sure, movies like this are financially successful for DreamWorks, but story-wise, they are... Trash, trash, trash. And an absolute travesty when compared to their earlier works. Not to mention the endless pipeline of sequels that desperately try to capitalize off the success of their predecessors. Oh look, they're making a Shrek 5. Great. And I had all but written off DreamWorks as a dead studio. Of course, that was until... Hey! This is a party! Where's the music? The Last Wish was a phenomenally good movie. A spin-off sequel had no right being this good, but it was. Now, I'm not going to spend time talking about how good this movie was, because we could be here all day, but it did restore a little bit of faith I had in DreamWorks. So when I heard they were making a original movie with an art style that wasn't, uh, how can I best describe DreamWorks's current art style? Um, big round ugly bean mouth. I was curious. Also, full disclosure, it was either DreamWorks' movie or this pretentious, self-serving nightmare. No thank you. So I decided to take a chance and went to go see The Wild Robot. And it was pretty okay. Not great, but a step in the right direction. Because I don't know how else to describe it other than it felt like a DreamWorks movie. It had a refreshing, impactful art style, an original story that sure had lots of light comedic moments, but didn't shy away from or lessen darker realities of life. And the story provides a pretty good moral question to the audience, albeit it gets a little muddied up at the end though. So for my highbrow critic score, I give The Wild Robot a 6 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my review scores and I get into spoiler territory. So if you want to watch The Wild Robot spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for being here and I want you to have a good day. Now, I already mentioned how this movie stands out from DreamWorks' recent films artistically, but another way it stands out is the overall tone and gravity of the central conflicts. All story has conflict. In fact, a story cannot exist without conflict, but the levels of severity in conflict can vary. And in the stories DreamWorks has been putting out, the conflict level has been... Weenie Hot Juniors! Sorry, I was actually pointing to the place next to it. Super Weenie Hot Juniors! They've been spilt milk, goo goo gaga, I said... Infantile is the word I think I'm looking for. Versus the old DreamWorks where you have things like... My whole village may be slaughtered because they refuse to adapt and grow. Or... Maybe I actually don't like solitude, and I was just using that as a coping mechanism for my crippling loneliness. Or, the will of God has been placed upon me to save my people from slavery and death. Do you see the difference here? Do you see it? And The Wild Robot is a sort of return to form for DreamWorks as a whole, because it deals with the brutality of death 
and what it takes to survive in an unforgiving world. Now, it will often add a comedic beat to soften the blow, but the gruesome realities of life are still in there. Like, there's a scene where a crow gets ripped apart by another animal, and the robot catches its decapitated head and goes, Oh, violence detected. <laughs> Gruesome, but funny. My point is, the tone is much more rooted in realistic issues and questions about life. Which I think is far better to expose children to than keeping them in a bubble and inadvertently teaching them to freak out over spilled milk. You know what I mean? Now, the main issue I have with this film is the ending. Or rather, the second ending that didn't need to exist. And pretty much undermines the tone of the entire movie. So, the basic plot of the story is... Robot crashes on island with no people and no tasks for it. The robot then finds a little duckling runt <laughs> after accidentally killing its entire family. Oops. And the robot makes it its task to raise the duckling runt, teach it to swim and fly so it can migrate south for the winter because if it doesn't leave, it will die. Which is a pretty good story and that's what we get you know the fish out of water outcasts coming together to beat the odds because being a runt and not fully developed the duckling has to find new and clever ways to fly and survive and the robot has to continually override her programming to her physical detriment in order to protect and raise the duckling which poses this moral question of should you override your programming or overcome your built-in instincts in order to potentially achieve a higher purpose, even if it costs you your well-being or your life? Which is more important? I don't know. That's a really good question. And for the robot, she chooses the life and well-being of the duckling over her own and succeeds in getting the duck ready for winter and it flies south into the sunset. The end. Except the movie keeps going for another 30 minutes. You're on the verge of greatness. We were this close. There's this whole subplot of where the robot came from and the type of society it is and how they will inevitably come back to reclaim their lost property, which adds nothing to the story, but it definitely takes away from it. Remember when I mentioned that the story was heavily based in reality? Well, throw that out the window because now we have scenes where all the animals on the island somehow survive an entire winter in a small little stone hut. What? How? Don't worry about it. And we have the animals coming together to fight a raging forest fire. N no, that's not happening. And then they come together to fight off super advanced killer robots. No, I don't think so. This is an editing issue. Everything that has to do with the civilization that the robot came from needs to be cut out of this film. This will allow you to focus more on the internal struggle of the robot as it slowly destroys itself for its developing love of the duckling. And the movie needs to end when the duckling flies south. So there it is. The movie isn't terrible. It just fumbles the ball by adding an extra ending for no reason. That's why I said this movie is just a step in the right direction for DreamWorks. Anyways, that's all I got for you. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate you and I'll catch you at the next one.